everyone, it's Kelsey. In this video today, I'm going to be doing a blue tongue skin cage tour and teaching you guys how to take care so of them. So let's get right into it. On top of the cage here, I customized this with Animal Plastics. It is obviously a metal screen. That way the UVB can get through, which is right there. And then we have a ceramic heat emitter that gives him his hottest hotspot. And over here we have my Herbstat 6, which controls all heat inside the cage. Now, if you're questioning what the screws on top of the cage were, that is because I installed three heat panels inside the cage. Now before we jump into showing you what the interior looks like, I just wanted to point out this decal I got for a pup. I just thought it was the cutest thing. When I first opened that right panel, this is what you see on this side of the cage. You see my Universal Rocks background, which I had installed, and you see those three heat panels that I was talking about. Each, of course, have their own probe and connected to the Herbstat 6. This allows for the perfect temperature gradient. If you've happened to notice the hydrometer and thermometer, it isn't accurate right now just because I've had this glass panel open, but usually the cooler side stays at 79 degrees, and the humidity can differ, of course, but a proper humidity for a northern blue tongue skink is 40 to 60 percent. As you can see, I have a very large hide for him, and some decor foliage, and this fake log, which I think is very cool. I had that in the last cage, but it just looked really great in here as well. And I use RepTichip for the bedding that holds humidity perfectly. Not only did I install the heating and the background myself, I installed the lighting as well. There is LED strips that go throughout this entire cage on the lip. And it was incredibly, incredibly difficult to install. And I thought you guys would enjoy my struggle. So I'm going to insert a clip here of how I had to install these. This is literally like a coffin, six feet long, and I've had to do install these lights. I have to install more. This is a now that I'm panning over to the left side of the cage, you can see Puff right there just chilling, and you can see his water bowl, a large hide, and this piece of bark, which acts as his basking spot, which is directly under the CHE and the UVB strip bulb. This temperature resides at 102 to 105 degrees. With that being said, it is very important for any reptile to have a proper temperature gradient. Of course, each reptile is going to have different needs, just like Puff over here. But keeping that in mind, for a northern blue tongue skink, 102 is perfect for a hot spot all the way down to 79 degrees on their cooler end. And in the middle here, since this is a very large cage, that also helps. I have a perfect gradient, so it goes down to the 90s, mid 80s all the way down to that 79 degrees. This allows for proper thermal regulation for this guy right here. He's obviously chilling in the warmer side right now. And he looks a little different right now, a little dull, just because he's going into shed. For the most part, that pretty much summarizes the inside of his cage and it goes over their care pretty briefly. You now know the proper temperatures and the proper humidity, what's good for substrate, what kind of hides they need. Um, obviously, always use the thermostat offer UVB for them. I know a lot of breeders say it's not required, but of course it's better to do so. So let's take Puff out for you guys. I wish I had brought a tripod with me because I'm not going to be able to do this with one hand. Oh, there he's yawning. That is so cute. But the reason I named Puff Puff is because he is all bluff. He loves to puff up. He loves to hiss at me when I take him out. Uh, it might intimidate some people, but he is really nice. He has never bit me. Let's like knock on wood for that. And of course, Puff the Magic Dragon. He's trying to get away from me. I think he knows that I'm trying to get him, but I'm going to get him for you guys. So I took him out without any problem at all. I just wish he wasn't going through shed right now to show you guys how beautiful his colors actually are. He almost looks gray right now. Let's not be interested in my fingers. Thank you so much. <laughs> that wouldn't be the best thing, just as I said, he's never bit me. But I think I'm going to enter a clip or a picture here just to show you guys what he actually looks like. And he is huge. He's like two feet long, guys. So blue tongue skinks get very large. I know a lot of people compare them to bearded dragons. Um, as far as their personalities, I guess they're pretty similar. Their care is not. And I don't really agree with the minimum cage requirements for these guys. I felt so bad keeping him in the previous cage, and now I can finally feel like he has a lot of room to roam, don't you, Puff? So I think blue tongue skinks make great pets. As long as you know what you're getting into, you do a lot of research, 
you know their care requirements and you know their requirements for their housing as well. They are pretty docile, especially the northern blue tongue skinks, but please make sure you know what you're getting into and you make sure you know how large of a space they actually need. And surprisingly, he can be pretty fast when he wants to as well. In this video, I briefly summarized how to take care of your northern blue tongue skink. I went over their temperature needs, humidity needs, what is a proper bedding for them to hold their humidity. I went over the type of heating elements I use, UVB lighting. Of course, you need a thermostat. So briefly, I went over their care. Now I just wanna show you what kind of food that I feed them. I actually put it out for you guys. When they are little, they're going to need cat food, but this is the food that I use for him now. This is a grain-free dog food that is especially important. You need to have grain-free. And I also, as treats, give him snails. Of course, I also incorporate, since he's an adult, vegetables like kale into his dog food, but this is the food. It really does have everything they need. And if we open up my closet here, I have my vitamins and supplements, which also are important. And this is what I use with vitamin D3 on top of his food. And sometimes I use it without the vitamin D3. I don't know what this little boy is doing thinking he can climb. <laughs> but before I end this video, I just wanted to state something that I see often in YouTube videos about blue tongue skinks and articles is that they make a cheap pet, which I cannot express enough that they are not. Obviously, you don't have to go all out like I do, but of course, you don't want to strive for the minimum with any animal. You want them to be here as long as they can be and live a happy and healthy life. So to do that, the initial cost is expensive, but I will say after that, the maintenance, of course, the reoccurring costs like bedding and food is relatively cheap. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Let me know what you think about this cage in the comments and don't forget to subscribe.